It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Just this week, another air raid in Yemen killed 35 civilians in the city of Sana'a. A draft United Nations report seen by Foreign Policy magazine is calling for Saudi-led coalition to be placed on the UN list of child killers. The confidential report apparently blames the Saudi-led coalition for three quarters of attacks on schools and hospitals in Yemen and killing more than 680 children. The United States and the UK are the main suppliers of weapons to Saudi Arabia and have supported the Saudi regime's war in Yemen both politically and militarily since the Saudi-led aerial bombardment began in the March of 2015. The Saudi-led coalition has been documented to have bombed schools, hospitals, shipping ports, marketplaces, weddings and funerals. The war has pushed millions of Yemenis to the brink of starvation and created the worst cholera outbreak in the world. Joining us today to discuss the current situation in Yemen and the leaked draft report is Medea Benjamin. She is the co-founder of the peace group Code Pink. Her latest book is Kingdom of Unjust Behind the U.S.-Saudi Connection. Welcome, Medea. Thank you, Sharmin. Medea, give us more details of what is in this report that caused the U.N. body, who is usually very cautious, to put Saudi-led coalition on the U.N. child killer list. Well, these are reports that come out every single year called Children in Armed Conflict, produced by the U.N. And uh, there was a report that was done last year that had Saudi Arabia on the list for precisely the same thing. It's bombing campaign in Yemen that has destroyed so many schools and hospitals and has uh, led to the killing and maiming of so many children. Last year when it came up, there was a big brouhaha because the Saudis uh, threatened to pull out money, millions and millions of dollars from much needed aid programs that the UN runs and blackmailed Ban Ki-moon. Ban Ki-moon, um, he, he caved uh, to the disgrace of the United Nations. He even openly said, uh, I hate to do this, but I can't afford to lose the money for programs that uh, support children around the world. Uh, and so uh, here we are a year later, the Saudis were supposed to have quote, cleaned up their act and stopped killing so many children so they wouldn't be on report this year, uh, but they haven't done so. And so here we are again in exactly the same situation where the UN, according to its own rules, is supposed to come out with this report and put Saudi Arabia on a rogue list of nations that kills and maims children. And um, once again, the new secretary general is going to be faced with the uh, decision of whether to release this report or not. Uh, speaking of secretary generals, Medea, Antonio Guterres, the current UN secretary general, earlier this year, um, suppressed a UN report that concluded that the state of Israel was guilty of the crime of apartheid. Do you have any faith that Guterres will do the right thing according to the UN Charter, protect children according to Children's Convention on the Rights of Children, or bring any force to bear on the guilty parties here? I don't know what the Secretary General will end up doing. Uh, because he's put in a lose-lose situation. If he puts out the report, he risks losing a lot of money, not just from the Saudis, but also from other Gulf states. And this year, as opposed to last year, the U.S. is part of the pressure campaign uh, to not release the report as it stands now. On the other hand, if he doesn't uh, release it and include the Saudis in the list of rogue states, then it's re he is really jeopardizing the reputation of the United Nations. Uh, so I'm not sure which road he will take, but either one of them is, is a bad road. And it, and it shows the power of the um, Saudi and Gulf states in terms of they are wealthy. And wealthy states have a way to blackmail the UN. 
why else would Saudi Arabia be allowed to be on the Women's Commission of the United Nations? Why else would Saudi Arabia be allowed to be on the Human Rights Council of the United Nations? Unfortunately, it's all about the money that they can use as a, as a uh, stick. Right. And, uh, Maria, in January this year, the UN uh, released a report stating that a child dies in Yemen from preventable causes every 10 minutes. If, um, even if only half of those deaths are a result of the war, that still places the potential number of dead children in the tens, if not hundreds of thousands. Why do you think that only deaths that are a direct result of armaments are being counted uh, in this war? I think that's absolutely the key issue to talk about, Germany, because, first of all, the count of children who have died as a result of the bombing is way undercounted because uh, journalists from the outside are not allowed in. The Saudis control who even gets on the UN flights. You cannot get into Saudi Arabia, uh, I mean, into Yemen, uh, if you are an independent reporter. Uh, that really wants to verify what's happening on the ground. But more importantly is what you bring up, because the deaths from direct bombing are a small fraction of the number of children who are dying in Yemen because of the Saudi bombing campaign. When the Saudis bomb uh, dozens and dozens of healthcare facilities, uh, the uh, children are, have nowhere to go to get even a basic um, rehydration. When the Saudis are bombing the sewer system, uh, the water system, there is not clean water to drink, and so they're getting sick from uh, the, the dysentery. Uh, when the Saudis um, have so destroyed all of the basic infrastructure in the country and reduced people's ability to make a living to even feed their children, there are, as you said, a child dying every 10 minutes. And so if you put those together, yes, the number of children who are dying as a direct result of the Saudi intervention in Yemen would be in the hundreds of thousands. Hmm. Um, Medea, I want to play a clip from a video released by Human Rights Watch in, the Mar in March of 2016 that many people probably haven't seen yet. So let's watch. I'm standing here in the remains of Mustaba Market. This is one of 12 marketplaces that we've seen bombed by the Saudi-led coalition since the beginning of this one-year war. That was nearly one and a half years ago, and things have gotten much worse. Uh, why do you think the establishment, media, and corporate media coverage of this war has been so poor? Well, one of the reasons is that Saudi Arabia is a close ally to the Western countries, that the U.S., uh, the U.K., uh, Canada, France, Germany, all of these wonderful democracies uh, have been selling massive amounts of weapons to Saudi Arabia, enriching their uh, domestic industries, and, um, and they want to keep that gravy train going. And so this war is really in the interests of these large corporations. Uh, and the other is, as I said earlier, that the Saudis control who is getting into the country. I know personally, I've been trying to get in, into Yemen for months now, and it is so difficult. Um, the, the, uh, uh, the UN has flights, but these flights are vetted by the Saudis. Um, so I would say those two things together mean that there is almost no coverage in uh, the mainstream media about the most devastating uh, war that is going on right now, and, um, and no talk about the U.S. complicity in this war. Right. And, uh, Maria, the Middle East Eye uh, is reporting that, based on emails it has seen, that the Saudi crown prince wants out of this war in Yemen. How seriously should we be taking this revelation, and what is this what's stopping him from actually just doing that right now, if that's so? 
Well, what's stopping him from doing it is he doesn't want to leave without, quote, winning. And I think now they are trying to create uh, a, a conflict within the conflict, getting the uh, very strange bedfellows that the uh, Houthis and Ali Abdullah Saleh, the last president, that coalition is now fighting among itself. And I'm sure there's a, a lot of uh, Saudi bloody hands within that as well. Um, so the, the uh, uh, prince wants to end the conflict, but he end, wants to end the conflict with a win. Uh, and that is going to be very difficult. So I think um, that what the uh, international community has to do is put pressure on the, all of the parties involved in the conflict to come to a political solution. Uh, you know that there is no winning in these kinds of situations. There is just a depletion of uh, the people and the fighters. And I think um, also economically, the Saudi ruling class is understanding how with the low price of oil and the tremendously high cost of this war in Yemen, as well as the cost that the Saudis are paying for Saudi intervention in other countries, um, that they are trying to look at a way to uh, cut down on that flow of uh, financial resources. So this would be a time for the U.S. Uh, if we had a functioning State Department and a government that wanted to solve conflicts, uh, it would be a time to step in and really put the pressure on to come to a political solution. Right. And, and what can they do? How can they go about doing a political solution at this time? Well, it's not that complicated. It's a power sharing agreement that has to be reached between uh, the uh, government, the uh, uh, of Hadi and the and the and the Houthis, and um, this is uh, something that should have been done from the very beginning. This war shouldn't have gone on for the last two years, uh, and it's the only way that the war is going to end. I think the UN should be stepping in to do this. Um, but there really has to be, uh, and perhaps there is right now, a willingness on the part of the Saudis to find a way out. All right, Mehdi, I thank you so much for joining us today. I know it's a busy week weekend for you um, out there in California, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Bye-bye. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.